Testament reading for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 18. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only forty are found there? He said, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found there? He said, For the sake of twenty I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Colossians chapter 2. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins, and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. 
The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. This is the word of the Lord. And the Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 11. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God always makes good and wise decisions. The majestic and awe-inspiring universe He created to be our home is an example of that, that He always makes good and wise decisions. Wisely, on the first day, He created light, and then He separated the light from the darkness. On the second day, he created the sky, that is, an expanse to separate the waters above from the waters below. God continued on with his awe-inspiring work of creation until the sixth day, when he concluded that all he had made was very good. With the heavens and the earth now completed in all their vast array, on the seventh day, God rested. Why six days of creation instead of doing it all at once? Or why not five days of creation or 10 or 20? Answers may vary to questions like this, but Christians wouldn't want to say anything which conflicts with the truth that God always makes good and wise decisions. The majestic and awe-inspiring universe he created to be our home is an example of that. And God was right to put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the Garden of Eden. We can trust his wisdom in that. He was right not to intervene when Adam and Eve disobeyed and ate the forbidden fruit. We can trust the goodness of God and the wisdom of God. God always makes good and wise decisions. Though Moses was at first unconvinced, God was right to choose him to lead his people, uh, Israel, out of bondage in Egypt. 
though the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk was at first unconvinced. God was right to raise up the Babylonians and use them to rebuke and admonish his Old Testament people. God always makes good and wise decisions. God always makes good and wise decisions when it comes to answering the prayers of the faithful. If the faith-filled farmer boldly prays for an abundance of rain, while at the same time the faith-filled construction worker persistently prays for sunshine, God will know what to do. He will know how to answer. God always makes good and wise decisions when it comes to answering the prayers of the faithful. In our Old Testament lesson for today, God has made a good and wise decision. God sees that the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin grievous. In his wisdom and goodness and righteousness, God has concluded that these cities must soon be destroyed on account of their great sin. And God chose to let Abraham know about his plans for Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham, standing before the Lord, responded with a series of bold and persistent questions for God. Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked, he asked. What if there are fifty righteous people in this city? Will you not spare the place for the sake of the fifty? Abraham asked, Will not the judge of all the earth do what is right? Though perhaps Abraham was at first unconvinced, after a series of bold and persistent questions for God, Abraham left that place believing that the judge of all the earth would do what was right. God always makes good and wise decisions. In our gospel lesson for today, at their request, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. And he encourages them to pray with shameless audacity, he says. That is, with boldness and persistence. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And Jesus also encourages his disciples to pray, trusting that his answers to their prayers, the answers to their prayers that God gives, will always... Jesus also encourages them to pray, trusting that in his answer to their prayers, God will always make good and wise decisions. Pray, Jesus teaches them, trusting that your Father in heaven knows how to give good gifts to his children. If you ask for a fish, he will not give you a snake. If you ask for an egg, he will not give you a scorpion. Even when his answer to your prayer is no, God always makes good and wise decisions. Pray, convinced that the judge of all the earth will do what is right. And Jesus teaches us to pray in the same way that he taught his apostles, with boldness and persistence certain that the judge of all the earth will do what is right. Pray, trusting God's goodness and wisdom. But trusting God can be hard to do when our prayers are seemingly answered with silence. Trusting God can be hard to do when we pray for one thing and his answer is the opposite. Like when we ask for healing for a loved one, but then their condition grows worse. We may be tempted at times to feel like we're being treated unfairly by God, when despite our prayers we see the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer. We may be tempted to feel anger or despair or hopelessness. We may be tempted to doubt that God hears us or tempted to think that he's forgotten about us or to think that he's distracted with other more important people or events. But Jesus teaches us to trust that God always makes good and wise decisions. He teaches us to pray the same way he taught his apostles to pray, with boldness and persistence, certain that the judge of all the earth will do what is right. Pray, trusting God's goodness and wisdom. That's how Jesus himself prayed, with boldness and persistence, certain that the judge of all the earth would do what is right. He prayed trusting his heavenly Father's goodness 
and wisdom, sometimes even praying to him with shameless audacity. For example, when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, that may be an example of him praying with shameless audacity. Jesus knows that he was sent to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yet he boldly prays for this cup of suffering to be taken away from him. He prays the same thing more than once that night, that is, persistently. He tries to recruit his friends to pray with him. In Gethsemane, the sinless Lamb of God without spot or blemish or stain prays with shameless audacity. Jesus prayed that the cup of suffering would be taken away from him, and he makes the good and wise decision to accept his Father's answer when that answer is no. He chooses to obey his Father's will and to fulfill his mission of redemption for us. Jesus lovingly lays down his life for his church. Colossians reads that in Christ Jesus, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Yet he does not let this equality with the Father become a thing to be used to his own advantage. Instead, he dies to take away our guilt for all the times we've doubted God's goodness and wisdom, for all the times we've doubted that the judge of all the earth would most certainly do what is right for his church. Through his sacrifice, Jesus forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us, nailing it to the cross, in the words of Colossians. You have been reconciled to God through the blood of the Savior, and he invites you to keep praying with boldness and persistence. You will be heard and answered by the one who always makes good and wise decisions for his church. And one day soon, on a day chosen by the Father's goodness and wisdom, the resurrected Jesus will return in glory. He will rise from the dead on that day, like he was raised from the dead on Easter. Jesus will renew and restore every part of God's broken creation, as it says in Romans 8, setting it free from its bondage to sin and decay. The majestic and awe-inspiring universe God created to be our home will be your home forever. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, make us ever eager to draw near to you in prayer and thanksgiving, as your Son has taught us to do. Make us bold to pray that your name would be hallowed among us and your kingdom flourish in this place. Grant us trusting hearts that confidently and prayerfully turn to you with all our joys and sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of wisdom and truth, hear our prayers for those who have been taken captive through the world's hollow and deceptive philosophies, and who therefore still remain apart from your church. Take away their iniquity, create in them a clean heart and mind, and turn them from their false gods to you, the living and true God. Gather them into your holy church, to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, continue to watch over and guide all those you have placed in authority over us in this land. Give them wisdom from above, sound reasoning, and good judgment. Bless our nation with good health, prosperity, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Guard and protect our armed forces as they labor to keep our nation safe. Shield from all harm police officers, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, disaster relief workers, and all those whose selfless service aids and comforts us in every earthly need. 
give peace to the nations of the world and set every land free from war, terror, and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we set before you now all who cry out to you for mercy, healing, and help. Especially, we remember the residents of Hope Creek and other care facilities. Be with them in their struggles and give healing wherever needed in body, mind, soul, and spirit. We remember all those on our prayer lists and those on our hearts and minds. Deliver them from all their afflictions according to your will. Comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Be near the dying and let your holy angels attend them. Keep the hurting mindful of who they are in Christ, your beloved sons and daughters, whose prayers are always heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the Central Illinois District Convention now completed. We praise you for all the good the delegates were able to accomplish in your name and to your glory. As your church moves forward in faith, cause us to recognize and act on every opportunity for fruitful service. Fill us with zeal for the work of your church and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring that peace which is beyond all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, enthroned in glory, you gather your saints into the shelter of your heavenly presence, cleansing them and making them holy through the blood of the Lamb. Keep us faithful throughout our lives here, firmly rooted and built up in your Son, that we too would one day join the hosts of heaven in the ceaseless praises sung before your throne. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.